Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers, and uh, thank God it's Friday, you know, another uh, end of uh, the business week. Uh, everybody looks forward to Friday because we are going to rest, you know, uh, from Saturday and uh, Sunday. Uh, again, welcome to uh, the Daily Fountain Devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, something that is related uh, with uh, giving. And the topic for our uh, meditation today is none shall appear before me empty-handed. None shall appear before me empty-handed. And we're going to read from Exodus chapter 23, from verse 10 to 19. Exodus 23, 10 to 19. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for uh, giving us this opportunity to share your word with your people. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will give us interpretation. You will circumcise our ears and our heart to hear and to receive your word and help us to uh, do this words to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text is from Exodus 23 from verse 10 to 19, and I read, Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave, the beasts of the field may eat. In like manner you shall do with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all that I have said to you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, nor let it be heard from your mouth. Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the feast of the unleavened bread, you shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded you, at the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. And the feast of the harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year, when you have gathered in the fruits of your labors from the field, three times in a year all your male shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until morning. The first of the first fruit of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, so we, um, we are going to, uh, uh, our verses of emphasis will be uh, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 and 15. And I'm going to read that verse 14 and 15. Uh, from the New Living Translation. I, I like the way it kind of simplifies it, you know, explains it better. Each year you must celebrate three festivals in my honor. First, celebrate the festival of the unleavened bread. For seven days, the bread you eat must be made without yeast, just as I commanded you. Celebrate this festival annually at the appointed time in early spring, in the month of Abib, for that is the anniversary of your departure from Egypt. No man, no one may appear before me without an offering. So I like the, 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 the new King James said, no man will, 
no man shall appear before me empty. So uh, somebody can, you know, move it to, you know, empty. I don't understand what empty is. But New Living Translation further, you know, explains it. No, no one may appear before me without an offering. So we are talking about giving. That's really what we are talking about. Even though sometimes I don't, you know, because of the way uh, giving, you know, has been so abused, you know, sometimes I try to run away from it. But again, if something is being abused, it means that there is a way to do it. If you have uh, a, a fake product anywhere, it means the only reason why you have a fake product is because there is an original. You know, I, I, will, I will tell them in, in the church that I pastor, you know, I mean, you can never show me a 1,000 uh, dollar note. You will never find a 1,000 dollar note. The reason is because it doesn't exist in the original. So you can print a fake. But you can have a hundred dollar note that is fake because there is an original. Yeah, so, so, so just because of the fact that the, uh, the, the subject matter of giving has been so abused, you know, does not mean that we cannot talk about it because God uh, talked about it. It is in the Bible. No man shall appear before me empty. No one shall ap may appear before me without an offering. So next time when your pastor calls for offering, don't start saying, oh, they have come again, okay? The, 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 what to do is to make sure you understand the concept of given. You understand the principle behind what you are doing. Make sure you do this thing and you do it unto the Lord. And that is how God is going to bless you. So I ask this question. Is it fair for God to make those demands from his children? Is it fair for God to say to them, you know, uh, bring the first fruit offering. Um, um, uh, bring this offering. Bring the other offering. So, so when you go to, let's do like a, a, a little holistic view of this. Thing. There are all kinds of offering, you know, and there are all, all manner, of, all manner of giving in the Bible. Some people will make a vow, you know, and, and they will say, God, if you do this for me, I am going to come back to appreciate you, to thank you for what you have done. I mean, Jacob did that when he was running away from his brother Esau. Okay, now. There is also tithe. Tithe is a way of giving. When you give a, a, a ten percent of your income in the Anglican Church, we depending on where you are, what we do in the church, we have what we call pledge form. So some people will pledge to support the ministry in the cathedral with a certain amount of money in a in a calendar year, and they start redeeming it. You know, maybe Sunday by Sunday, weekly, as the Lord provides. Others will say, oh, I am not in the pledging business. I want, I'm a tighter. Okay, so we we'll also let them do it. Others will say, oh, I come from this angle that I have made a promise to God that this is what I'm going to do. And we we'll let them do it. At the end of the day, the important thing is that these people are coming, this thing is coming from their heart. They are not doing it by compulsion. Nobody is compelling them to do it. So, the question is, is it fair for God to make those demands from his children? My answer is yes, it is fair. So, so for him to ask from us, is it, for God to ask from us looks to me like trying to test our faith. You know, the same thing we do with our children. We, you know, you, you, you buy some cookies and your child wants part of that cookie. And you give that, your child that cookie. You know what? Uh, after a, a while, you come back to ask the child, oh, can you give me some? You know, some will give you. Some will withhold. Okay? So you are trying to test the generosity of that child. I believe that that is the same thing that God is doing with us. I mean, the earth is the Lord and the fullness. Everything, the cattle in the thousand hills belongs to God. If he wants any of them, he can take it. Okay? But he has kept us here to manage his resources. He has kept us here to manage his earth for him. Okay? So, when that thing comes, when God tries our faith, when he tests us, 
the question is, are you going to pass the test or are you going to fail the test? Again, you go back to how we started. We cannot because of the abuse in the subject matter of giving and we say no way i'm not going to give you know you know some people will come from this place of oh I, I am giving to the pastor no you're not giving to the pastor some will say oh i'm giving to the church no you're not giving to the church you are giving to god you are giving to god it's just that there is this person that has been appointed to pastor that local congregation and is the person that uh, receives the offering receives the tithe you know on behalf of heaven okay so make sure you get it right and if you get it right that is when you will no longer be into you know what did they do with this what did they do with that and of course a church like anglican church this is what i tell people a church like anglican church a wonderful church like a church that is run it's not a one-man church it's not something it's not a place where the pastor wakes up in the morning and he will tell the congregation oh the lord said we should do this before that money will be spent in the church the uh, vestry you call PCC they have to meet they, they, they will have to be a budget they will have to be make sure that the money is captured the expenditure is captured in the budget and that is how this money is going to be spent and in the church that I pastor I don't even have a vote because I'm only a tiebreaker so it's still going to be the 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 people that you nominated and voted into the vestry that will decide on how this money will be spent so so, so, so you are sure that whatever you bring to church, giving to God, will be well accounted for. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is not also to say that there are not places where mismanagement happens. So, so we have to watch out for that, find a way to make the correction. But let it not stop you from giving. Let it not stop you from giving. Because when you stop giving, you are also blocking your blessings. Okay? Don't forget that God owns everything. And he just, what he did for us is, you know, he, he appointed us as his custodian. So he gives us the privilege. God gives us the privilege to plant and harvest like we read, you know, he gave, he gave the children of Israel the privilege to plant and harvest for six complete years. Six years they will plant and harvest, plant and harvest, plant and harvest. And he said to them, on the seventh year, let the land be fallow. Whatever is there will be left for the poor of the land. And after the poor of the land have taken, the beasts of the field will also eat from it. This God is a generous God. This God is a generous God. So, out of seven years, he gave you six years. So, six over seven is what you have. Just one over seven is what God is saying. Just leave it. And when you also leave it, you know, what the, your, the land regenerates, okay? The, the land becomes more fertile, okay? So, so he lets us walk and use our domestic aids for six days and let them rest for one day so that they may be refreshed. The idea behind this is so that, it, for a, like, like Jesus will say, that man was not meant for Sabbath. It's the Sabbath that was meant for man. Man was not meant for Sabbath, okay? The reason for the Sabbath is actually for our good, for the good of the children of Israel. And it, if we bring it to our time, it is for our good. Rest is good for everybody. Okay, rest is good for everybody. And so, 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 so it's for our own good that God, you know, make these things the way it is. My question is, what is wrong in appreciating through our offering what is wrong in appreciating through our tithe what is wrong in our appreciating this god through our first fruit someone who gave you this privilege the privilege of planting for six years and resting for one year the privilege of of planting and reaping harvesting what is the the, the one that deposited all kinds of resources on earth 
and we are tapping these resources and that is how we are who we are today you know maybe you are you are you are a man of means or a woman of means it's just because god gave you the privilege to you know enjoy the resources that he made possible to be available on earth so what is wrong in appreciating him through our offering through our tithe through our first fruit let me say this it's the attitude of gratitude that consolidates our miracle the attitude of gratitude is very important the attitude of gratitude is very important so when next time there is a call for uh, from the church for offering for whatever it might be special fundraising for a particular purpose i want to encourage you to make sure that your name is there Okay, make sure that your name is there. It doesn't matter how much. You must not give. You know, like we said, these five fingers are not equal. We'll never be equal. Okay, so, 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 so the tallest finger will give. The rich will come give from abundance. The poor will come give from lack. And at the end of the day, God is the one that blesses people. It is important for us. It's not enough to just say, oh, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Oh, God, I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. You know, it is good to say all these things. But, you know, our love must be followed with action. God so loved the world. That was how God demonstrated his own love for us. He so loved the world and he gave. He loved the world and he gave. So if you love God and you are not given to support and in, in order to propagate and expand the kingdom of God on earth, your love doesn't mean anything you know like what i tell uh uh, uh couples you know uh uh, uh when in, in counseling you know I, I tell them that standalone love cannot sustain your marriage like if you wake up every morning you tell your wife i love you i love you i love you i love and, and in nigerian parlance somebody will say one day that wife will say to you in love i go chop you know so 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 standalone love cannot it has to be backed with action it has to be backed with something for god so loved and he gave amen so it is the attitude of gratitude that consolidates our miracle that was the experience of the samaritan leper you remember that leper in of from samaria in luke chapter 17 uh in in luke chapter 17 from verse 11 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to abridge it. I will read 11, 15 to 19. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with, I'm reading verse 15, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, we are there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? We are there not any found who return to give glory to God except this foreigner. And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you whole. You see what happened to that leper? He he was so appreciative. The other guys, maybe because Jesus came from their region, you know, Samaritans are people that are regarded as outcasts and sinners, okay? But, but it was this guy that didn't have the kind of privilege the others had that came back to say thank you, came back to roll on the ground and say thank you. That's his own way of giving back. Okay, that's his own way of showing appreciation. Yeah, it, we are not saying that you can appreciate God with the uh, words of your mouth. You can do that. Okay, but when there is also need to show that appreciation with substance, also go ahead and do, do it. It was this man that came back. What did Jesus say? He said to the guy, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. May that be your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me say this to us as we begin to round up. Give us never lack. Give us never lack. 
Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, the Bible said, There is one who scatters and yet increases, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. There is this guy that scatters, gives, spreads. The Bible said that yet he increases, but there is also this one that withholds more than is supposed to. Again, you see, God is not saying, you know, like, like some people will say, am I going to bring all my money to church? No, no. God is not even saying, God, 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 God wants you to save. He wants you to keep some. Look at, look at, look at. Six years, do whatever you do. That's yours. But one year, leave it for the poor. Leave it for the beast of the field. Okay? In Titan, just... 10% of your income, 90% belongs to you. 10 goes to God. In your offering, because it is free will in our situation right now, it is free will. That is what it is. In the New Testament era, it is free will. It has to come from your heart. The how liberal you are will determine what you do. So, the generous in Proverbs 11, 25, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. The generous will prosper. I'm just saying, saying to you that givers never lack. In Psalm 126, 5, 5 and 6, the Bible said, Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with harvest. My prayer is that God will give you understanding in these scriptures. And it's going to change something in you. Just in case you are there, you are out there, and you've gone to the other side, you know, of, of you know, people that, you know, criticize the church. Not because one person or one church is doing it wrong. Does not mean that the whole entire body of Christ is doing it wrong. Don't bring down the house just because of a simple, I think they say you don't cut your nose to speak bite your, uh, uh, your, 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 your face or what. Okay, so be careful. Psalm 126, 5 and 6, the Bible says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his shield with him. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 8. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seed will get small crop, but the one who plants generously will get generous crop. I'm reading from New Living Translation. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly, okay? Or in response to pressure. Okay, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. It is the lack of knowledge in the word of God that will make people go to uh, Christian meetings and come back and say, oh, the man of God pressured me. No, why would the man of God pressure you when, if you know the truth? It doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter how sweet tongue the man is. You know, uh, that how, 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 how sugar-coated, you know, his tongue is. You are not supposed to fall under pressure. And you cannot be because of that, that one of experience, and you now block your heart and you say, I am not giving again. God loves people who give cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Finally, Galatians chapter 6, 7 and to 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will in the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will in the Spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary Why doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. So it's actually for our own good that we don't appear before God empty-handed. It's actually for our own good that we don't appear before God empty-handed. I pray that the Lord will give you, give you um, 
uh, even as, uh, as we close, that the Spirit of the living God will continue to minister grace and truth to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for your word that we have heard. I pray, Jehovah, for uh, people out there that are, have become uh, demoralized, disenchanted, O oh Lord God, because of the prosperity message, O oh Lord, that have not yielded anything to them and they have abandoned the faith. Father, I pray that as they hear your word, that Father, you will minister to them. You will draw them back unto yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Jehovah, for your blessings upon the works of the hands of your people. Father, bless your people. As your people plant, O oh God, cause that they will reap, O oh God, a multiple fold in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for answering these prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of uh, this devotional today, Friday. May God bless you. I pray you have a wonderful weekend. Remember to join us tomorrow for another edition of uh, Daily Fountain Devotional. God bless you. See you uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.